So today I'd like to talk to you about the design for a native beehive. This is for a honey hive. The hive is in three sections. A bottom section, middle section, and top section. The idea of the three sections is that you can both propagate from this hive, so split it into two hives when it's ready, and also collect honey from the top. We collect honey from this compartment here, it's called the honey super, coming from the beekeeping industry, referring to the top box of a hive where the honey is normally extracted from. These two sections together make up the brood box. The brood are the young bees, the larval bees, and you need to divide the brood into two in order to propagate a box. You've got to have some brood in each half of the split that you do. This design allows that. As we'll see later, when we propagate a real hive, we'll separate the bottom box from the mid box. Like that. That's basically dividing the brood into two, which allows you to propagate the hive. I'm just going to talk about a few features of this box so that you've got a better understanding of what we're seeing when we do a real hive split. The bottom box contains the entry hole. The entry hole is important because these bees being stingless require the physical structure of the box for their defence. So it's important to have the hole of the right diameter not too big, otherwise they can't defend it properly. Not too small, or you get congestion at the hive entrance. 13 millimetres is probably a, a good compromise. One thing you'll notice is the box is made of thick timber. Thicker timber than is normally used for honeybee hives. That's because these bees don't have such a great ability to regulate the temperature in their hive as honeybees do. So we rely on the thermal properties, the thermal insulating properties of this thick timber for them to be able to keep warm in winter and keep out the heat in summer. The middle box, which is the other half of the brood compartment of the hive, uh, also has a hole in the back, which we call a ventilation hole. Having two holes in the box allows the bees to pass cool air through the box when it's hot in summer. This plastic section on top, which is rebated in to the top box, prevents the brood from coming any higher than this position. So the brood are contained down in these two bottom boxes. That means that this top box is used solely for honey storage. So a beekeeper can come along, remove that top box, extract honey from this part with no fear of damaging the brood. Another feature of this bottom box are these two bars here. These bars are what we call anti-slumping bars. You can imagine when we split this box in two, so we're splitting the bottom from this section, that in order to propagate the hive, that you're going to have a lot of structure up in here. And you don't and it's no longer going to be supported from underneath anymore because we're going to be putting an empty box underneath here. So to prevent that structure from collapsing down, we have these two bars, anti-slump bars. A couple of other features of this hive design I'll mention are the bevels that we have at this point here, 
and the diagonally opposite point here, we have a bevel. And that bevel allows us to insert the hive tool more easily. Another important feature of these hives is that these surfaces, that surface there and this surface here, that come together, what we call the mating surfaces of the hives, they're very flat and straight so that there's minimum gap between the hive parts. If I look through there, I'll see very little light coming through. That means that the bees have as little work as possible to seal that gap. It's very important to them that they seal that gap. It helps them to defend themselves from enemies and to maintain the climatic conditions inside that box. So the quicker they can do that, the better off they are. I consider pine to be an excellent timber for making these boxes because it does have many advantages. It's a great insulator, it's easy to work, it's relatively cheap. I think its environmental footprint is quite small because it is plantation grown in a sustainable way, I believe. The disadvantage of pine is that it's not particularly durable when left in exterior type situations. One way of compensating that, obviously, is to paint the box. Another way is to, during the construction of the box, treat the end grain in particular with a timber preservative. This one's been treated with copper naphthenate before being finely painted. You can see the green colour here. That's where the end grain has been treated. Um, that, that will then mature for a few weeks before the box is painted. Another feature of these boxes to keep them protected from the elements is a metal lid. This is one type of metal lid that can be used. It relies on its own tension to, to fasten to the box. Pull it out, place it on, release it, and it will stay on there. Um, except in gale force winds and provide in protection from the sun, rain, extend the life of the paint of the box and the box itself.